guys just proper edge of my seat sort of stuff this that's beeping away but it's it's because it's set so sensitive that it's registering the slightest little knocks on the edge of that hinged rig oh look at that back bobbin shaking go on go on let's have you Well, morning folks, welcome back to Bivid Up. Long time no see. We have been really busy over the last few months. I'll get into telling you more about that later on. Unfortunately today, as you can see, my passenger seat is empty. Lazy little git face didn't get up, did she? So, uh, Dad's all on his own today. Car's full of some uh, cork handled rods, so that can only mean one thing. We're off to do some piking. I'm going down to our uh, one of our lakes on our syndicate and um, not sure what number I'm going to fish yet might fish a couple of them might spend all day on one of them we'll have to see how that takes me when I get there um, but till that first things first breakfast McDonald's it is about quarter to five so by the time I get there there should be some red art freshly made sausage and egg McMuffins just for me See you in a bit folks. Flipping typical. I just get here and it started to rain. Right. Get that gate open. Start watching the water to find somewhere to fish. See you when I'm set up folks. Right, we're through the gate folks. On the little bit of drive up past pond one and I figured I'm gonna start off on pond two. There's a pond two sort of laid out like a golf club so it's quite possible for the uh, the pipe to shoal all the uh, silverfish up down at the bottom like where the, the club would be as it were of the golf club and then they'd have to get through quite a narrow little gap to get back into the other side of the lake and the, the shaft it's sort of split up by a long thin island so again it, it creates two like little ambush points that the pike could sit at oh looks like somebody's there though that's going to be a bit of a bum hole if, it, if they are Here a minute, I'm going to have a little look. <coughs> well, it's too dark out there, folks, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, so been had a look at the spot on pot, Pond 2, and there's a carp angler a few pegs down from where I am. I don't think I'm going to cause him a problem, but I've been and uh, had another look around some of the other ponds. And I'll be honest with you, they're not took any of my fancy, so I'm back at Pond 2. The time is now quarter to six. How time flies when you're picking a swim. Um, I'm going to drop on here. No, not this one. Further down. Nearly. Nearly had a long way to walk. There we go, down here. And then I'm going to get the deeper out, I think, and just chuck it around this bay. Because if there's no silvers here, I'm not stopping. I'll find somewhere else. So, get back to you in a bit, folks. 
Oh, I might be able to uh, screen record the deeper. We'll see. See how it goes. Level pops up next is what happens. Hey, right, I've got everything set up on the bank books. I'm going to sit and have a coffee now and a cigarette and just listen, see if I'm in the right sort of area. Flipping forgot to charge the deeper, didn't I? So I've not been able to chuck that out and find out if there's any silverfish um, showed up down this end of the pond. But um, I'll soon find out because it won't be long till daylight and they'll be down here, they'll be striking. So we'll be in row. As soon as I hear something, I'll have a rod ready and get straight in the water. See you in a bit, folks. Interesting, interesting. Good start. Have some more of that, please. Go on, go on. <coughs> go on, let's have you. Let's have you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a line. Check the drag. Oh yes, we're in. Ah. Ooh, it was only a baby. It was only a baby. Come on, you look at your little baby. You got that. Got that down well, didn't you? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, right. Getting sorted. Yeah, all planned. Good start to the day. Hold still, because you've snappled that proper, haven't you? Hey, thank you. Yeah. Hold on, let's grab you. Let's grab you. Gosh. That's the job. I don't want to get them gill rakers. I do want to see where the troubles are. Right. Open wide. Yep, you liked that, didn't you? You did. Oh, still. There we go. Oh, still. Done. There we go, guys. Little Jack, about three or four pound. And pop him back in the uh, landing net, let him recover in the side. Good start for the day, and I got my lamprey back.
Well folks, that was a nice start to the day, wasn't it? Little Jack, about three or four pound. I hope the uh, fishing gods are going to smile on me today and make Raven really, really jealous because the lazy little sod didn't get up. So I thought, what better way for the cart gods to teach her a lesson than for me to, uh, to bring her laws that she bought for herself. Like that one, Raven. Ooh, swimmy, swimmy, swimmy. Yep, gonna use that one. Gonna catch fish on it. That one. Ooh, that one looks nice and shiny. Gonna use that one too. Gonna catch a fish on it. Oh, look, a perch pattern. Gonna catch it. Gonna catch on this too. Should've got up, you lazy little sod. Anyway, before I do all of that, gotta get a coffee on it. It's about half past eight. Uh, the sun is well and truly up and it's going to be shining in my eyes in about 5-6 minutes so, so the sunglasses are on I'm going to do the coffee, here it is it's the uh, winter sunshine isn't it? super bright, first thing in the morning and like, that's, that's 3 in the afternoon just right when you're trying to drive uh, but not particularly warm oh, although I'm not cold definitely not cold, plenty of clothing on I'm going to sit here for a little while, um, kind of on a little peninsula, I was explaining earlier that this lake looks a little bit like a golf club, um, I'm on the bit that's, that sort of meets the, with the <coughs> with a bit that you would hit the ball with, meets the shaft, you know? so I've got access to water that side of me, water that side of me, and uh, currently the fish that I had came off the margin right on the left hand side on lamprey and the right hand rod is fished by what's left of a, a lily bed this is a lily bed there in the summer so it's not been that cold at the moment so I'm fishing just off of that because I think there's probably still going to be some stuff underneath the water there uh, and that's on a smelt and uh, that's just fished on the bottom um, on a float and I'm, I'm laid on about a foot over depth. The, uh, the float's also got one of the um, rear indicators on it, the drop off arm indicators, so it's pulling the line tight which makes the float stand perfectly upright. I've got that on because I'm not paying a great deal of attention to, to the float to be honest with you, and more relying on the alarm at, at this moment in time. Um, because that, that arm's on, it's standing the float upright. If I was float fishing it without the alarms or the uh, drop off indicator, I'd only have that float at about 45 degrees. So I could see it drop down if, if the weight was lifted up. And obviously I can see it stand up if the weight's pulled. I feel like I'm losing like a dimension of indication a little bit like this, whilst at the same time gaining a bit of convenience. So pros and cons, isn't it? Anyway, back on with the coffee. The most important thing. Oh. So, not been on the bank for ages. Uh, well, that's not true. We have been on the bank three times. In, well, since, since June. Yeah, since June. June or July? July, since July. Um, Zula, my baby dog, and working compadre, I had a litter of puppies, and what with the uh, old cost of living crisis, it took a lot longer to find them homes than <coughs> was originally planned. Nearly all done now though, I've still got one little boy left, not that this is a sales pitch, just letting you know. Um, So yeah, it's, it's really difficult to get away and do some fishing so we missed we missed the sort of autumn carping really. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a fair bit more piking done. Because they're a bit easier, you know, get out of the day, can't you? Bit of spinning, bit of a bait in, that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, 
over the next few months all being well we should get some some fishing done if the little sod gets up out of the bed obviously easy git hmm. anyway I'm gonna make my coffee and I'll get back to you guys in a little while see you in a bit folks it's just coming up to lunchtime in fact it's just gone lunchtime it's about 10 past 12 and uh, we've still got something smashing up the silver fish over on the far side two or three repositions with the bait see if I can tempt them on the deads and uh, nothing's come of that just of yet I'm gonna give it probably another half hour just finish my coffee off really uh, and then I'm gonna bring the uh, float rod in and just work a few laws around that area I think Predominantly uh, Raven's new ones. Try and catch on them in it. Other than that first jet that I had earlier on, not much more else to report. I did have a little dad nap. That was that was nice. Woke up with cold feet though. So I put a coat on. Well, I'll crack on drinking my coffee. And then I'll start working these laws, so see you in a bit, folks. Oh, just turn my phone camera back on. There was just a huge explosion of fish out of the water. Definitely a predator over there, or several predators over there. Wow, I hope the camera got that, come on now, that's got to be a pick up. Now I just don't know what to do. My ledger rod's a little further to the left, into the, into the corner. Probably about a rod length off the, uh, the left hand bank over there. I don't know if to reel that in and work the uh, spinning rod or bring the float rod in and work the spinning rod. Mm -hmm. More thoughts required. But I hope the main camera caught that explosion of fish. Oh look, there's another one, look. Not as big as the one that I'd just seen. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. because that second eruption of fish further back and to the left is slightly further down the bank than, uh, than where the uh, ledger dead bait is, the lamprey. So again, I've got to give it some thought. And the wife's ringing, so now I've got to answer that. See you in a sec. Homemade boom, 
It helps keep the bait away from the uh, plate and edge stem. And to one of the large cap quick release uh, clips, just because my fingers are rubbish. And a long trees, so sort of 18 22 inch, and then down to a full Nash tungsten extra long uh, tail rubber, and then that's connected to the Ashby, uh, Nash swivels with the small uh, river eye one end and the large river eye the other end. And then off of that, trim down Nash tail rubber, short section to where I put the uh, feet. Uh, red trebles, you know, probably uh, satisfies me more than the pipe, to be honest. And then the beats tied in the middle there, and there's just enough air <coughs> trapped in that bit there to make it stand up, like so, under the on the bottom. And this section, I'm going to inject oil into. So when it's being casted out, it'll be like that obviously, that'll maintain the oil and then as the uh, bait's suspended in the water like so, the oil's lighter than water so it'll slowly seep its way out of there and straight up the side of the, the lamprey up to the surface. Uh, that's the theory, I'm going to uh, move the camera because it's raining and uh, I'll get back to you shortly. Little mini predator. He was only just able to get the smelt in his mouth. Tiny little boy. About a pound, pound and a half, something like that. Second one of the day, though. Which we're definitely worth getting out of bed for. We've got to start somewhere, haven't they? Twenty pounder in the making. Ooh, steady there, meaty. Get a couple of little pictures to send to Steve and Raven, obviously. Show what she's missing out on. Back to you in a bit. <coughs> right, that's the uh, second rod back in the water again. It's intermittent uh, rain on and off. It's just enough, just enough to actually like wreck your. Yeah, electronics. So if you leave the cameras out in it, you add it. Um, but not enough to wet the ground, if you know what I mean. It's just really annoying. You set up to do one thing and uh, you can't. Rain comes a couple of minutes, as soon as you get into it, you have to stop. So, I might have to put on hold the uh, have a wander around with the spinning rod and the float rod because I don't want to run the risk of getting the camera damaged so I'm going to stop here for now I still think there might be a chance of a bigger one and, uh, I'll have a slow pack up later on and if the mood takes me I'll drive slowly down off the complex and stop it, whichever swims take my fancy. Spend a couple of minutes in each one of them and then bugger off in. So, that's the uh, update, see you in a bit. <coughs> right then, so this is my swim to start off with. Stood on the bank got access to pretty much the bottom part of the lake. Now, it's not the first time we've fished this swim. Steve actually caught his first carp off the complex from this swim. From approximately where I had the first pike this morning. Give or take. So, this is what I've been thinking. This morning, this morning's first fish, 
looking from around that margin over there, that rod length of that large thick tree just off centre. And I'm currently fishing in the leaf debris over there in the far corner, either in it or just off of it if it's moved around. And then over there is the float and that's in roughly the same place that we got the second fish from. And I've seen fish jumping out of the water as things are striking at them across all that bank today and some of that bank as well. So my initial thoughts of that or the pike have showed the silverfish up seem to have been correct and this seems to be where they've got them. However, if all the jacks have showed the uh, silverfish up, say all, you know, the majority of the jacks have showed the silverfish up, that should mean that behind them, somewhere out there, are the bigger pike waiting to eat the roach fed pike that come out of here. Because nothing likes to eat pike more than pike. Those two that I had today, like the first one, alright, that might have needed a, it's about three pounds, so it might have needed a, an upper double to snaffle it down without a problem. But that second one could be dinner for anything, eight pounds or more, no worries. So, all the action from the small silver fish has not gone any further than that tree over on the far side, just up from my flute. So somewhere out here, potentially, bigger girls. That corner looks quite pikey, there's quite a lot of leaf debris over there that you could sit underneath, a bit of shadow. I can't reach it from here though, not without casting across all those swims. So what I'm going to do is give that 10 more minutes out of there, that flute, and I'll bring it in and it's on a smelt at the moment, so I'm going to change that for a bigger bait. Not sure what yet, I'll have a look in the bag to see what I've got. And then I'm going to start punting it around this area here, trying to find out if there's any bigger girls sat waiting for those guys coming out of the snack bar. That's the plan, it's just started to rain, so beat the retreat. Right folks, I've uh, just put the kettle on, getting another coffee on the go, hazarding a guess now because of the cloud cover that's coming in, we've probably got about maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most of daylight left, so uh, I'm going to be fishing a little bit into dark, and pack everything away that I don't need out, so uh, all I've got to do is put the, the rods away and get the cotton bugger off. So. Uh, see what happens. Dawn and dusk are normally pretty good times for the bigger ones to be feeding. I've got the uh, float rod moved further down the right hand margin. That's uh, now on half a mackerel, quite a big bit of mackerel. So I'm thinking if there's any big girls out there maybe they might pick that up. Left hand rod is still in that bay. Um, the leaf debris has moved around a little bit now but still where it was uh, after I injected the oil into it um, still fishing the lamprey there so we'll see what happens well it's not been a bad day I suppose I've had two fish so a good start back to the video in it's better than watching a video with no fish on it isn't it so better not be too greedy it would be nice to have a big fat monster though just to rub Raven's nose into it that if we were, if I was here with Raven now, I'm set up in the swim that I would have set her up in because it, it looks the best. And I would have been fishing the one to my right, which is uh, as on the golf club, as it were. It's just that last little bit of the shaft where it meets the ball at the bottom that hits hits the golf ball. I don't know the terms for flipping golf clubs. So it's quite a bit of narrow water, and as the as the weather is at the moment, the wind's been blowing down that end all, all day so it's, a, it's supposed to be a northeasterly wind today but it's 
come from the other side, northwesterly. And uh, yeah, it's been all right, man. I've had to win behind behind me all day. The rain's coming off my back, so it's worked out all right. I don't know where. I don't know much about this lake, so I don't know whether the fish follow the wind or hide from it. It's difficult to tell with the situation I'm fishing in because they could have quite easily been shoaled there, herded there, as it were. But we'll see. See what the uh, early evening dusk time brings. How's the main camera doing? Oh well, that's still still quite light on there. So we'll let that roll until it can't see anymore. And then I'll fish in probably an hour or so after that. I've got lights in case I do need to see. Uh, one for the camera and obviously one for my head. We'll take it from there. So, I'll see you guys in a bit, hopefully. With a monster! <laughs> Yeah, we've got something playing with the bait. Yeah, see the line keep twitching. Not moving till that drop off indicators dropped off though. Delkims are set on super, super sensitive. And that's on my uh, pike hinge stiff or hinged rig. Hinged pike rig, whatever you want to call it. It's bound to go now, isn't it? It's raining. That's on the lamprey. Ooh. Something messing about with it. Let's see if it's a big girl. Guys, just proper edge of my seat sort of stuff this that's beeping away but it's it's because it's set so sensitive that it's registering the slightest little knocks on the edge of that hinged rig oh look at that back bobbin shaking go on go on let's have you check it all Go on, slither it down your throat. Take the full length of it. Go on. It's 
There's just no real way of knowing. It's either a little one struggling with it. Oh, it's cold, my breath. It's either a little one struggling with it, or it's a big one. It's like, ooh, I've not seen this before. Oh, I hate it when it's like this now, because now you like, has it lost interest? Has it felt the orcs and gone, no, I don't want that now. Do, do. What I'm going to do is stop recording on this for a bit. So it's been about, about three minutes of silence and I was really starting to think, oh no, that was it, it's, it's felt the ups and gone. And now we're back on the beeps again. Seconds worth of tenseness or up being again. I wonder if yeah, you can see it on the camera. It's going, it's still going. Go on, go on, go on. I've got to sat on my hands right now. coming back down again now. pulling it slightly tighter but not enough to pull it out of that back dropper and it's not on tight either it came off from that little three pounder so it should be capable of coming off on anything else really the one set exactly the same Turn the camera back off again. Turn it back on if we need to. So yeah. Um, it's coming up towards five o'clock. It's getting dark. I'm filming uh, on the, the phone with the vivid behind me. It's too dark for you to see me so I've got to use the head torch. But the, uh, the main camera is kind, of, it's kind of just dealing with the uh, outside light. I don't know about the GoPro that sat watching the the uh, drop off indicators. <clears throat> don't know what I can see to be honest with you. But I am really impressed that it's been going all day. Big battery pack on the back of it. One card. Hmm, little robins popped down. But yeah, it's been going all day. Uh, so hopefully it's got the two fish ones on there. Uh, right, I'm going to uh, turn the camera around because this has got like a night camera on it. You can see a little bit better in low light. I'm going to fish until I can't see using the phone anymore. And then pack up and go home. So we'll see. See if there's any big girls still out there. See you in a bit, folks. Right folks, this is a state of play at the moment then, my last hour. Pretty much got everything packed up. Uh, this is how dark it is without the light. 
So yeah. Let's see if there's any last minute monsters out there. Well folks, that's pretty much the end of the day for me today. The slow crawl out the complex, we and then the quick dash home. Didn't have uh, any big fat ones unfortunately. A little bit of excitement on the retrieving of the lamprey. That was the left hand rod on the ledger. So was I, uh, I picked it up to reel it in, something grabbed hold of the tail. It's a little pike, about, about three pound. He followed it, or he kept hold of it, rather, all the way in, till he got to the side and he saw me, and then he let go. So it was to, he just got right on the end of the tail. Completely missed the hooks, so, yeah. C'est la vie, the one that got away, as it were. Uh, fun time, though. Nice way of starting us uh, back off on our vlogs. Sorry Raven didn't make it. The lazy cow didn't get out of bed. Please comment and tease her down below. Ooh. Oh. Bumpy, bumpy. So hopefully, I would like to be out next weekend, too. But it is getting closer and closer to Christmas, so the wife may have other plans. We'll see how we go. Ooh, proper bumpy that is. Right, well I'm about at the gate when I've got to let myself out, so if you watched it this so far folks, please uh, subscribe, click the like, Maybe even share it on your social media account. I know Raven would really appreciate that. And to be honest, so would I too. I suppose it lets us both know that we're doing something right. So, until next time folks, on Bivid Up, I'll see you again later.